time somebody tells you that a bad Republican is better than a good Democrat, remind them that a bad Republican is a Democrat. Welcome to the Rebel West Podcast, coming to you Thursday morning, like every Thursday morning, from the Permanent Command Bunker, deep in East Texas. All right. So, we've got a Speaker of the House that's on the ropes. We've got counties across the state that have either passed a resolution calling for his resignation, uh, they're busy uh, writing Rule 44 censures left, right, and center, despite the fact that the state party seems to be against that rule, but things are happening. And as a result, Dave Feeling's uh, approval in his own district has dropped. if you, if you checked a year, two years ago, you know, when the session started, man, he was right there on top, right? 60%. We got the speakership. We can get anything we want. 60% of registered, likely Republican primary voters. This is a very specific poll, people, okay? 60% were going to reelect him, and why not? He's Speaker of the House. Well, the latest poll by the same people, remember, likely voters. Republican primary voters. This is a very specific thing because after the primaries, things are done, right? The people saying they're going to vote for Phelan again is down to 38%. That is huge. That's a, that's a 20, 22% drop or whatever. It's almost half of those people that change their mind. And what that's led to is we've already got a primary challenger for that for that district, and that's District 21. So when I say that the precinct chairs are the most powerful people in Texas, if only they'll step up and be Texans, I'm not making this stuff up, okay? You ask the people of Harrison County out in East Texas or Cass County out in East Texas, how do you get rid of a state legislator? That's a rhino. And they'll say, we tried for years to do it in the primaries, but imagine, being able to do it before the election. Well, that's what they did. Those six counties that uh, Chris Patty represented, they stepped up and they all set up the votes. They had everything ready for a formal censure of Chris Patty. He was was censured in three of those counties. The other three counties had it scheduled. They gave him the required two weeks notice. And the only way he could avoid being censured in all six of his counties was for him to resign the House seat that he held. 30 days after he said he was going to run for re-election with all the money in the world he needed, no opponent from the Democratic side in the general, no opponent in the primary, he resigned. That's how you get rid of these rhinos. And there's about 60 of them down in Austin that we would love to get rid of. But we need more Texas precinct chairs. And I don't care if you're currently a precinct chair. If you're not stepping up and using Rule 44 to get rid of the rhinos, you're not a Texas precinct chair. You might be living here, you might even have been born here, but you're not acting like a Texan. Now, there's a lot of talk about what makes a true Texan. Well, here it is. It doesn't matter the odds. It doesn't matter if people look at you weird. It doesn't matter the slings and arrows that you suffer. Right is right, wrong is wrong, and you call people when it's wrong. That's the old cowboy rules, right? If it ain't right, mention it. Bring it up. It's biblical. Challenge it. Stand. Now, for all you Christians out there that say it's the end times and we can just let it go because it's all God's will, that is not what the book calls for. The book calls for you to stand until he returns. Not till he's almost here. Not till he's on the train right down the track, almost, next stop. When he shows back up. And if you think he, you know when he's going to show back up, then you don't believe what the Bible says. The Bible says you don't know the day or time of his coming. So don't give me that. Don't use the book as an excuse to sit on your butts and do nothing and watch this state and this nation go to hell in a handbasket while you don't care about your children's future, you don't care about your grandkids' future. Go, oh no, it's the second coming, you know, next Tuesday I don't have to do anything. Well, you haven't done anything your whole life. It wasn't the book that stopped you from doing it. But you can change that. You can change that today. Now, one of my favorite passages in the Bible is one word. It's in the Old Testament. And the one word is tomorrow. 
See, when, when the Pharaoh finally decided that he'd had enough of these stupid frogs, he couldn't stand it anymore. He went to Moses. He says, fine, fine, fine. You win. Get rid of these frogs. And Moses asked him, well, when, when do you want me to get rid of them? And Pharaoh's answer, tomorrow. That's when people want to get involved. That's when people want to make a difference. That's when people want to give up drinking, give up smoking tomorrow. It's always tomorrow. Tomorrow never gets here. You need to decide today to do something. You know we're circling the drain. All the people that gave their lives for this country are dependent on you to make it not a waste. So Flag Day is coming up. I, I've been invited on to the Mark, uh, Mike Lindell uh, network. We're going to have links in the channel. Uh, it'll be the 14th. It's Trump's birthday, so we might have a special guest. The schedule is a little fluid, as you might imagine. There's about 60 guests. You can go on there, and it's a who's who of national conservatives. Oh, and me. And, uh, you, you know, like I said, we might have a special guest. So I will be on. Uh, they promised a slot somewhere between noon and 3 o'clock Texas time. So I'm going to be watching that. Uh, it's going to be eight hours of people coming on there. It's going to be General, uh, General Flynn's going to be on there. Steve Bannon's going to be on there. It, it's going to be great. And, and it's all about why you need to be patriotic, why you want to love this flag, why you want to love this nation, and how important it is and how different it is from the rest of the world and the rest of history. So in keeping with that, uh, all you true Texans out there that want to stand up and do something, do it today, okay? We've got a guy out of Cherokee County, Mike Smith. He wrote the original resolution and censure for Dave Phelan. He got the resolution passed. He didn't have enough votes for the Rule 44 censure, but he did get it passed. If you can't get the censure, don't throw up your hands and give up. Just go back to the resolution. Oh, we didn't have two-thirds for a censure. Oh, well, I guess we can't do anything. Nope. You show up with one written a Rule 44 censure, and then a resolution asking for Phelan's resignation. You have both when you show up. You put forward the Rule 44 censure. You get it passed. You don't let people bully you. You don't let people stop you. They can't stop you. You make a motion. You get a second. You get a vote. There is no, oh, let me check with these people in Austin and my attorney, oh, and i got to go on vacation, oh, and I'm, I'm going to change the rules and the meeting's going to read reason. No. You're there, the body's there, you have quorum, you demand that they follow the rules. I put forward a motion. I have a second, that's a vote. And nobody gets to override you. And you do it. You call your fellow precinct chairs and you, you demand an emergency meeting. And if the chair won't do it, ignore them. I don't know what your bylaws are, but our bylaws were, we could just call a meeting. As long as we had quorum, it was a meeting. You schedule it, you call the meeting, you make the motion, you put it forward. Now, if you don't have two-thirds, and a lot of times you'll miss it by a vote or so, because there's a lot of cowards and cronies that need to be replaced in the Republican Party. I've been saying that for two years, and I felt it for longer than that. Keep track of them and find their replacement. You can do that. You're allowed to do that. The other thing going on is if you miss it by just a couple of votes, then you move forward. I make a motion. I put forward this resolution. You only need a simple majority. Well, if you almost got two-thirds, then you're guaranteed a simple majority, right? You get that, you hold a press conference, you put it out, you let the world know, you let your county know that this speaker is no good. And if your state rep voted for a speaker who declared he was going to go against the Republican Party's wishes and seek, uh, seek Democratic chairmen for committees, that's a strike against your state rep. If your state rep voted for this rushed impeachment, no matter how you feel, no matter how it turns out, 48 hours is not enough for anybody in Texas to get there and comment adequately. This process was not right. It was not handled right, and you know it. And the only reason they voted that way is that Phelan bought them. And they cared more about Phelan's money than doing what was right. And that's not Texan, folks. There ain't an amount of money in the world that could get me to do that. Even if I thought the person was dead to rights guilty, I would still go through the process the right way. That's why we have a process. 
These people routinely ignore the rules, and you do nothing about it. You raise your kids that way? Well, a lot of these politicians are nothing more than man-children. They're down there running around like teenagers. They're doing what they want, whatever they want to do because they think they're above the law, and you do nothing to stop them. So they are. When we come back, we'll talk about our WGOP program. Welcome back. So my staff has mentioned I left out some key things in my last segment. So here we go. One is the flag day show that I'm going to be a part of was put together by Steve Stern, a great American out of Florida. He's in his 80s, and if he can do something like this on his own, there's no limit to what you can do. It's called Get Patriotized. All the links are in the show notes. Um, it was not my intention for the Five Star Plan to go national. I, I thought Texas was a big enough project. But this week, we're sending books out to Colorado. We're sending books out to Maine. We've sent books all over the United States. But within the state of Texas, we're sending out one book to a very special person out in Colorado City, Colorado City, Texas. Yeah, we got, I don't even know how many different names for towns we have in Texas. But uh, Jim Bell Harris, great friend of the Five Star Clan, a great patriot, great man. And thank you, Jim, for being a fan and um, hope you enjoy the new book. Uh, along that same line, we have a resource page and a blog, and that is not for us. That's, that's, uh, that's for you, that's for patriots to get connected, to get information. If you have information that you want to get out, if you don't have media contacts, you can send it to the 5 starplancom all spelled out. And, and if it's, you know, pertinent, We'll try to get that out to the people that need to know about it, or we'll put it on the show, or we'll put it on the blog. We'll do something, and we'll help you communicate. You are not alone in this, okay? That is one of the reasons that tyrants want to outlaw public gatherings. They want to outlaw and control communication to make you think you're the lone nut that has a problem with what's going on. You are not. Most of the time, you are in the majority, the vast majority. But the majority is busy care taking care of their kids and, and making a living. So they have time to worry about all this nonsense, right? And it seems like you're the only person. You're not. There are a lot of us out here, okay? There's millions of us. Trump didn't get elected by people with, with pink hair that weigh 400 pounds and wore, wear size zero clothing and then demand your respect. People didn't get uh, elected by somebody who... This, a man who decides as a woman or a woman decides as a man and then he gets offended that you don't, offend, you, you don't accept them for who they are. Well, they didn't accept them for who they are. Why should I? All of these things aside, they're distractions. The key things are we have some God-given rights and we have to stand up as Texans and protect those God-given rights. And if somebody's going to call you a name or look at you funny or you're going to lose friends or family over it, well, then you're going to lose friends or family over it. I've actually gained family over it, okay? Because fellow conservatives, people that share what we share, are more family than some of the family I was born with. And, and that's a blessing. So, the double GOP program, we have been putting this out, and it's been a two-pronged effort. One is, we've told um, people that have more than one title in the GOP to give up one of those titles. And they can double the GOP just by recruiting somebody to take their place. And the example I have is, uh, let's say, you're the vice chair of the Republican Party of Texas, but you're also the county chair of Harris County. Well, the vice chair has actually stepped down as the county chair. This creates a slot. Probably a precinct chair will take that spot. That creates a spot. Some, some normal person, some voter, some dedicated Republican will fill in and take that spot. So, in effect, the vice chair has just doubled her numbers. And that is great. Now, I wish every member of the SREC would do this. If you're an SREC and a precinct chair, you have to know somebody that would be willing to take that precinct chair position on. Instead of you wearing two hats, you could double the GOP. I call on all the SRECs that are also county chairs, all the SRECs that are also precinct chairs, to give up one of those two positions and double the GOP. It doesn't take a lot of effort. 
And if you're a precinct chair and you don't know one Republican that could take your spot or wants to take your spot, then you're a lousy precinct chair because you've got a couple thousand people in your district and you're supposed to be talking to those voters and identifying your replacement. So that's one prong, and that's working. The other prong is five counties a week for a year we are focusing on. And this week's county, uh, this week's counties, we've got Hansfield, Hardman, Hardin, Harris, and Harrison County. Harrison County is where I live. So in those counties, if you're watching this show or somebody's sharing this show with you, you know somebody in those counties that are conservative, have them step forward and fill some empty precinct chairs. We've got a lot of empties, okay? Now Harrison's done a really good job. Uh, Lee Lester down there has keep, keep, keeps his seats filled. There's a couple people that we'd like to see replaced, not very many. There's a couple of empties, not very many. But uh, Hardin, I'm sorry, Hansville and Hardeman, according to the state website, there are no precinct chairs in those counties meaning there's just no Republican Party to speak of. If you are, call yourself a Republican, you mostly vote for Republican, please, if you live in those counties, uh, please step forward and become the GOP. You are qualified. You are a voter. You are conservative. Now, and it's not a big time commitment. They meet every three months or they meet once a month or whatever. You guys decide. And it's not a paid position. It's not, it's not glamorous. But it gets things done, and it can get rid of bad politicians. If two people step forward in either one of those counties, and one makes a motion to censure Dave Phelan, and the other one seconds it, and you take a vote, and you got two votes, and you're the only two won, it's unanimous. County chair is irrelevant at that point. Even if they vote against it, it's still two-thirds. And you can get it done. Those are the rules. So... I look forward to talking to uh, the new challenger that Dave Phelan has. I, I look forward to going down and in South Texas where they've censured Tony Gonzalez and now we've got four good candidates running. I am looking forward to hearing about your state rep being censured or a resolution calling for his resignation because of how they voted or who they voted for, for speaker. You only need three violations, and that is not a trick, folks. These people are voting to bring gambling to Texas. They're voting to raise the legal age to own a firearm to 21 in Texas. They're not doing anything about the invasion but making noise, okay? And it is an invasion. It's millions of people. We just did the D-Day uh, commemoration day, right? That was about 144,000 troops hit the uh, beaches of Normandy. You realize we have more than 144,000 people coming across the border every single month, most of them military-aged men. This is an invasion. We've got car chases in South Texas. We've got cartel gunfights in South Texas. We've got people afraid to leave their houses, people roaming across their property at night, stealing stuff, killing animals. And if you dare protect your property by the law in Texas, they're trespassers, it's posted, you can shoot them. Sorry, you'll go to jail. They'll try you for murder. Because something about being an illegal alien in Texas, they get in-state tuition, they get the red carpet rolled out, they get free bus rides from our, from our governor and free plane rides from our president. The government has forgotten about the people of South Texas. Both the Democrats and the Republicans have turned their back on the people of South Texas. And if I lived in South Texas, I would be sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that's why Tony Gonzalez got censured, and that's why Tony Gonzalez is going to get replaced. You need to do that with more people. You need to do that across the state. That's going to be you because there's nobody else coming. You are the cavalry. You've got to realize it and you've got to kill a fly. <laughs> Till next week, Robert West.